Welcome to the intersection of faith and the culture. Thanks for joining us today here on Wobblers Live. I'm Rick Green, former Texas legislator and America's Constitution coach. Here with David Barton, America's premier historian and our founder at Wobblers, and with Tim Barton, national speaker and pastor and president of Wobblers. You can learn about all three of us at our website, wallbuilderslive.com. That's also the place to get our archives, list of our stations, and that is the place to make a donation. Yep, I'm slowing down here. I, I know we tend to talk 90 miles a, a minute here at, at Wall Builders, so uh, I'm going to slow down because this is very important. It takes dollars to be effective. It takes money to have staff, to, to get added, you know, add, add radio stations, to advertise, to reach people. It's just how the world works. And so when you donate a dollar to Wall Builders Live or $100 or $1,000 or $10,000 or whatever you can do, when you donate those dollars actually amplify our voice. It gives us a chance to add stations. It gives us a chance to, to reach more people. It gives us a chance to go on tour and do things like we uh, do with our biblical citizenship uh, barnstorming tour and other things that we do. Those dollars are what make it possible for us to reach people and teach truth. Well, when we teach that truth and people act on that truth, we are in the process of saving our constitutional republic. So that's what your dollars do when you donate. And I can't Thank you enough. There's so many of you from all over the country that donate on a regular basis. Uh, some of you, you do it once a year. Some of you, are once a month. However you donate, please know that we appreciate it. Know that it makes it possible for us to do what we do. And I'm going to ask you to dig deep and consider doing that again. Wallbuilderslive.com. Click on that donate button. Make your contribution today. It will help us spread the good news, help us speak truth to even more of the culture. So thanks for your support. Thanks for being a part of this. So we got a great program lined up for you today. All right, David, Tim, Kevin Lundberg will be with us uh, when we come back from the break a little later. He's a former state senator there in Colorado, uh, been with us many times at the Legislators Conference, has a great new book out called Colorado's Radical Left Turn and a Warning to America. And, and you know, one of the things that I learned looking through the book is that, I mean, th the left works hard. Let's just be honest about it. They're willing to put in the hard work and they actually <laughs> telegraph their plans. And we saw them do that in Colorado. And what Kevin's saying is, let's make sure we don't let that happen to America. But we're actually watching it happen at the federal level as well. So I would just throw this to you guys. You know, do you think we work as hard as the left? Or, or have we been a little bit, let's be honest, lazy because we've been enjoying our freedom and not paying enough attention to what's happening around us? Rick, I think that's a really good question. One of the things that historically we've documented and, and talked about for years is you can look back at the progressive movement and you can see where they started more than a hundred years ago when they had very good long-term plans. They've had people literally for decades rolling up their sleeves and being involved in the process and working strategically and critically to change things. And and, and you mentioned, this is some of the stuff that, that Kevin Lundberg points out in the book about what's happening in Colorado. And I'm sure when, when he's on momentarily, he can give us some more details from some of what he highlights in the book. But I think that is a great point is what we have the political battles that we have seen for so long is that the left has been much more consistent than the right in in continuing to show up and fight those political and philosophical battles and they've done it in strategic ways with education systems um right if you look at academia as a whole they've really taken that over and it's promoting an agenda if you look at hollywood as a whole they've taken it over it promotes an agenda and it's promoting this philosophical ideology and they've worked very hard to get to the place where they now have the vast majority of all the voices that people will hear promoting the same message. Rick, as you and Tim were just talking about that, the, the thing that strikes me, if I can use a football analogy since we're at the end of football season, uh, what you have with progressives, liberals, Democrats, et cetera, is they show up at training camp. We show up at game time and say, let's compete. And well, so it's a good analogy, man. Yeah. They, they go through all the game plan. They go through all the training. They go through all the exercise. They go through all the stuff that's there. And then we want to show up when the referee flips the coin and says, let's compete. And so what they have down is they have down process. They have down strategy much better than we do. We want results, but we're not putting in the process side of it. And I go back to a verse in 1 Timothy where the Bible says, nobody's crowned unless they run according to the rules. And the rules are something that we really don't pay attention to. And actually what we've seen in Colorado – we saw a decade ago in Iowa when they came in and flipped Iowa from being a solid red state to a purple state. And Danny Carroll, who is Speaker Pro Tem in Iowa, we had him on even back at the time talking about how that he was just shocked 
that he didn't win based on everything he knew. And then as he was doing the interview with the national reporter, he got online and looked at how that all these contributions against him came in from the East Coast and the West Coast into Iowa, and it came in 30 days before the election so that it didn't show up on on the reporting. And so he had no clue that all this money was flooding in his race and that he'd been targeted at a national level from L.A. and and from San Francisco and Miami and New York and Baltimore, and he was shocked at it. And so we saw that. We saw the same thing happen in Minnesota. Minnesota flipped from being a, a basically red state to a very blue state now, the same with Washington State. Washington State used to be fairly Republican. It is now definitely hardcore blue. They've got a game plan. And we keep showing up at election time and saying, now, who, who, who's who, who's on the court? Who, who am I guarding? What am, you know, we're, we're just not even seeing it. And I think that's where they really beat us. And that's where I think Kevin's book is so good that we can stop and say, OK, how, how does this process work? Let, let's have a game plan and a strategy on what we do going forward, because this is coming to the state in which you live, because they've been doing this now for at least two decades I know of. And even the states I pointed out, plus some others, they've used the same game plan every time, even though technology has changed. They just add the technology to the basic game plan. Well, Kevin's going to give us a little inside scoop on what happened there in Colorado and how we can uh, fight against that in the rest of the country. Stay with us, folks. State Senator Kevin Lundberg with us when we return on Wobblers Live. This is Tim Barton from Wall Builders with another moment from American history. Too often today, history education excludes great black heroes from the American founding, such as Lemuel Haynes. Haynes, abandoned as a baby, pioneered churches across Upper New England. He became the first black American to pastor a white congregation, to receive an honorary master's degree, and to be ordained by a mainstream Christian denomination, the Congregationalists. He was a soldier during the American Revolution, and in his churches on George Washington's birthday, he regularly preached sermons honoring George Washington. Even late in his life, he expressed his willingness to go back to battle if necessary to protect America, which he called a sacred ark. American history is filled with numerous examples of black heroes who are largely ignored by mainstream education today. For more information about Pastor Lemuel Haynes and other colonial patriots, go to wallbuilders.com. Welcome back to Wobblers Live. Thanks for staying with us today. So thrilled to have our friend Kevin Lundberg, former state senator from Colorado with us. Kevin, good to have you, brother. I'm glad to be with you. It's it's always good to talk on these things and to, to not just share with you, but to all of your listeners, too. Well, that's what I love the fact that your new book is not just for your fellow folks in Colorado, but for all of us in Texas and all across the country, a warning of what happened there. Unmasked 2020, Colorado's radical left turn and a warning to America uh, you know, we should have all been reading this back in February sure. of last yeah. year. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that that's quite true, but we didn't write it and publish it until September of last year. And <laughs> even there was kind of hustling because we were trying to say, uh, OK, here's the setup. In Colorado, uh, I actually turned out in 2018. Um, and but um, and, and at that point in time, the Republicans controlled the Senate. We had a Democrat governor and a Democrat House, but it was a mixed uh, deal on that. And, and so, um, we were managing with our, you know, political future for the state, but in 2018, um, the, the Democrats, and it isn't just Democrats, it's, it's the progressive hard left. I don't want to make it partisan as much as I want to make it policy. The progressive hard left took over the governor's office, the house and the Senate. So they were fully in charge and this is what we ended up with in 2020. And so the book relays all of the really the tragic mess that has occurred in Colorado with when the hard left steps in and says, OK, we're going to do everything we can to put all of our programs in place and we're going to shut down good, sound economic policy and we're going to uh, make it tough for parental rights. And and the schools are going to be run by the, you know, the hard left uh, cancel culture folks. Um, this book is 15 authors each writing from their own perspective. We've got attorneys, we've got former legislators, current legislators, journalists. They all gave the perspective of what in the world has happened in Colorado because they took over everything. You know, so often the uh, socialist Marxist agenda tends to be this utopian idea taught in the classroom. And 
and not necessarily played out, at least in America for 50 years, it was in the classroom and slowly moved in, into our politics. And too often it's a candidate with these, you know, fluffy ideas. We're going to make everything wonderful and everybody's going to be perfect. And all we have to go on is is theory and point to other countries. What you're saying is, look, folks, we did it right here in Colorado. They took over in our state and we already see the mess. Let's not let this happen to the entire nation. Exactly. Uh, the only thing I would say is they did it. Don't blame me, please. No, no. Good point. Good point. <laughs> but, but yes, it it is it is just dramatic. And you know, here, here's something that that that, that kind of uh, uh, visually shows it is uh, last spring, um, the the radical elements, you know, the BLM and the Antifa folks, literally took over the state capitol on the outside, and they they destroyed the place. And for weeks, they were allowed to just continue to to uh, come and, and, and vandalize everything. And, and, and it, it was just a, a real picture of what they're doing at every level in the state of Colorado. Um, and, you know, that, that's when I really sat down and said, somebody's got to, uh, got to make a record of this. And that's what this now, book now, is Now, Kevin, about. Let, me, let, me, let me interrupt you, because i got to ask you about the, the, the capital situation and night after yeah. night. And, 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 and I'm sure at that time, you know, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi and these others that have been so upset the last couple of weeks, they were probably every day on television saying this has got to stop in Colorado. Um, this is horrible for our our nation. We ha they were doing that, right? Uh, yeah, no, 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 not, no. not yeah. a peep. And the governor of Colorado was actually sending little signals of, well, these are not really rioters. These are protesters and we need to give them some space and some time. And so he refused to put adequate um, uh, uh, state patrol support to protect the building. Uh, wow. As a matter of fact, the, the, you know, the, the patrolman who was in charge of, of that detail to, uh, to give security, he ended up quitting because, you know, there's just a little handful of them. There are hundreds of people outside who are camping out. I remember I went there one day to take some pictures, and one of their leaders from the Antifa group came, and, and you know, he wanted to know what I was doing. I said, you know, taking a picture of all this destruction. And he said, well, they deserve it. And I'll tell you what, if they don't do what we tell them, we're going to burn the place down. It's exactly what he wow. said. And the governor was allowing this kind of activity to happen week after week after week. Do, do these guys go to some kind of conference? Was he with, uh, forget the mayor, Fry, what, Frey, whatever his name was in Minneapolis. I blame all the writing on him because as soon as he said, take the police in, in the police station, burn it down, let them, quote, air their grievances, that sent the signal to people all over the country it was okay to do that. But, I mean, do these people, do you think there's a common thread in their thinking that 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 we, we either they, they truly believe they'll get it out of their system or they truly are Marxist and they know that this leads to the division that allows them to gain power? Well, I'm not going to really... Uh presume on their motivation as much as I want to judge their actions. Yeah, and, good point. And, you know, it, so it's twofold. It's, it's, it's what these, these anarchists were doing, and, and it's, there's no question. I mean, they, they, you know, all of the, the logos and things that they painted on the building were Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Those are the folks doing that. But it's not just what happened to the outside of the state capitol building. It's what ha was happening on the inside in state government. Uh, how they are dismantling the oil and gas industry in Colorado, how they are 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 turning over the um, the school system to, to to the radical left elements that you know want to get rid of the the uh, tradition and heritage we have from the patriots of 1776 and and try to turn it into some sort of a supposed uh, uh, racist environment that that really is is not history; it's a corruption of history, and and then. The corruption of the current policies is, is you know, the real heart and soul of this. Um, Colorado is in deep, deep trouble. And now yeah. I believe that we're watching this play out on the national scene. And that's why I think this book really has something to say to everybody in this country who, who knows that we're going down the wrong road. Um, Unmasked 2020 is, is, is our record of what we see in Colorado and unfortunately, what we see just right around the corner for our entire nation. 
Yeah, it's it, we're seeing it play out on a national level uh, right before our eyes. Unmasked 2020, Colorado's radical left turn and a warning to America. And I'm just, you know, as I look through here, Kevin, it is. I mean, it's exactly what's happening now. People's House under siege, Colorado's arrogant, politicized public health bureaucracy. That's, man, we're seeing that all over the nation now. Uh, un- tyranny unleashed by a single party control. That That's happening right now. Uh, all, all of the things that they have done in Colorado, they're trying to do on the national level now. So what... What do we do to stop it? Is that even a fair question? How can we stop this? What are you guys trying to do to stop it in Colorado or reverse it? Well, the first thing we're doing is we're educating people. You know, uh, we, we are trying to tell them, look, look at all the facts, put it on the table. But the second is they've got to get engaged and involved. Uh, you can't sit back and think somebody else is going to fix this for you. Uh, you've got to get involved in the local level first and foremost. You know, become active in your community. Find out what's working and what isn't working. Or or maybe there's a political office that needs to be filled by you or somebody you know. So you need to get behind them and, and make that happen. We cannot sit back. We have to become a part of the solution. If yeah. any, now, I'm going to say that within the context of God guiding us and directing us, because I never want to think that we're on our own. The creator of the universe is the Colorado Constitution says the supreme ruler of the universe is um, is still in charge and still in control. But he gives us a direct responsibility and ability in this country to step up and make a difference. And we've got we've got to educate ourselves. We've got to educate other people. And then we've got to get to work. I I love how you started that, even with just the whole local level thing, because you know, sometimes we look at, especially on a national level, but even on a state level, you look at you look at these big issues and this big capital and this big budget, and you think, you know, I'm just one person on the local level, I can't do anything. But actually, at the local levels, where you can have the biggest impact and make the biggest difference, and if we will fight there, if we will take over those kind of places like school boards and city councils and even the water district, wherever, um, that will begin to filter up to these other levels. But we've got to start in our own backyard, just like in Nehemiah, right there at the wall where we live. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and and the book we wrote doesn't give the solution as much as it gives the problems. But but uh, but you got to assess the patient before you can before you can uh, you know uh, treat the patient. So you're right. I right. mean, this is this is the wake up call. I mean, this is the shake people out of their slumber uh, and, and say, right. listen, if you don't want this to happen in every state across the country, not only at the federal government level but at the state government level, I guarantee you there are groups trying to mirror what happened in Colorado in states that we think of as red states right now. Yeah, and, and you know, I'd like to say one thing. I'm very grateful that we have this federalism system where individual states determine much of their destiny. Yeah. In Colorado, we've lost uh, the, the direction. We've got to get it back. You know, I, I spoke to a big group last night uh, down in Colorado Springs about this very issue that people are, you know, what can I do right here and right now? But I'm grateful to say that in some states, uh, they still have, control of most of the reins of government. Well, they need to understand that this could come to them, too, if they sit back. But they can also be an example for the rest of us who are, you know, in Colorado's situation to to get back to where we need to be. Um, You know, uh, God's blessed us with a lot of opportunity for freedom and self-determination. But it only happens when we have the courage to to take charge and and make it right. And what you just described, I've been thinking about that a lot lately, just this this idea of a few states, if they would really grab the mantle of freedom and, and, and stop playing around with this socialism and stop implementing these things, even on a little level in these red states like they've been doing, um, you could have some cities on a hill, you know, beacons of, uh, of light to, to say this is the right way uh, to do it. So we're, we're praying for legislators all across the country to step up and do exactly that. Unmasked 2020, Colorado's radical left turn and a warning to America. Kevin, best place where do you want uh, recommend people to go get the book? Well, uh, you can get it at, uh, you know, the, the, the big major book distributors like Amazon and Burns and Noble, or you can even, I understand, go to your local bookseller and tell them to order it. Um, All I right. This is endorsed it. by some great folks, Michelle Malkin, John Fun, David Horowitz. Uh, and this is not, I want to make sure people don't think this is for legislators only to, to, to be able to stop it inside the Capitol. You're saying this is for every American to read so that they can do their part to stop this stuff happening in their local community and also know the right questions to ask of their state legislators yeah. and their federal congressmen. Um, this is, this gives you the blueprint of how they, you know, destroyed the system there. How do we prevent that from happening in every state across the country? 
Right, 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 and 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 it's you know it's it's not an easy read, honestly, uh, because there's a lot of bad stuff that happened, but it's a very necessary thing to 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 you know a good foundation to understand where we're starting from. So yeah, uh, yeah, and, and and because it's different authors, each chapter is its own package, you might say. Um, I recommend it to anybody who who cares what's happening not only today but for your children, your grandchildren. You know, we, we've got to get back to work, and I think we're starting to figure it out. Now let's let's do it. I, I do too, man. I, th- I think they're, they, they've they awakened the sleeping giant. I think people that, that, that never paid attention to this type of thing before, um, they're asking the right questions. They're wondering how in the world did we go so far so fast? We're losing our freedoms. There's so much tyranny taking place, and, and they're they're searching uh, for answers. So I, I think you're right. They're they're awake, and they're ready to get engaged, and, and they need this kind of information to uh, to do it the right way. Kevin Lumberg, great American patriot, man. I love you, brother, and I appreciate uh, what you do. I mean, we need more warriors like you and, and just appreciate you coming on and, and helping to get us informed, encourage people to go get the book. Thanks for your time today. Thank you, Rick. Uh, great to be with you. Stay with us, folks. We'll be right back with David and Tim Barton. Check out the book, Unmasked 2020, Colorado's Radical Left Turn and a Warning to America. We'll be right back. Hey guys, we want to let you know about a new resource we have at Wall Builders called The American Story. For so many years, people have asked us to do a history book to help tell more of the story that's just not known or not told today. And we would say very providentially in the midst of all of the new attacks coming out against America, whether it be from things like the 1619 Project that say America is evil and everything in America was built off slavery, which is certainly not true, or things like even the Black Lives Matter movement, the organization itself, not not the statement Black Lives Matter, but the organization that says we're against everything that America was built on and this is part of the Marxist ideology. There's so many things attacking America. Well, is America worth defending? What is a true story of America? We actually have written and told that story. Starting with Christopher Columbus, going roughly through Abraham Lincoln, we tell the story of America not as the story of a perfect nation or a perfect people, but the story of how God used these imperfect people and did great things through this nation. It's a story you want to check out. Wallbuilders.com, The American Story. We're back here on Wall Builders Live. Thanks to former state senator Kevin Lundberg for joining us today. And be sure and check out the book. We'll have a link today at wallbuilderslive.com. Back with David and Tim Barton. Uh, guys, I mean, it's almost like as you flip through this book, uh, you're seeing what's happening in Washington, D.C., a uh, mirror image of what they did in Colorado. But we can still stop this in many of the states if we do, like you said at the opening of the program, David, if we actually show up for spring training and get involved now, not on Election Day. You're right, Rick. And one of the things that has always stood out to me in the Bible is is Proverbs fourteen twenty three, where that it says all hard work is profitable, and we've got to be willing to put more work into it. Well, I need to spend time with the family. Uh, sorry, you're not going to have any time with the family if you don't get this thing under control. What we've seen with the first fifty executive orders uh, of the president, what we're seeing at the university level right now, what we're seeing with, with just the absolute shutdown uh, of big tech media and, and even publishing companies. I mean, it's amazing now that we're seeing publishing companies saying, "Well, you're conservative. We won't publish your book." I mean, we're not even going to have a, a platform for a voice in the way we've had it if we don't get involved and start putting some work in. And it's interesting to me, Dr. Benjamin Rush, one of my favorite founding fathers, signer of the Declaration, John Adams said he's in the top three of founding fathers. John Adams said you got George Washington, Ben Franklin, and Benjamin Rush. Benjamin Rush is called the father of public schools under the Constitution, and in his educational writings on how education is to work and the philosophy we should have in America, he pointed out that he said you should teach students in school to love God first, to love their country second, and to love their family third. And I thought, whoa, 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 family comes before country. And he points out, he said, if you don't love your country, if you lose control of your country, you'll lose your family. He said, controlling your country is part of preserving your family. And that's why in school, they thought the most important thing was to teach the love of God, how to have a relationship with God, know him, fear him. Then second was the love of country. And if you do that, then it's so much easier to keep your family because the policies will be better. And that's one of the things we're seeing now. So we really do have to get on the field much earlier. We have to be willing to give up some time and put some hard work in it. And that doesn't mean at a presidential level. That means at a local school board race or city council or whatever, or spend the time to go recruit some good people. It may take you three or four or five hours a year to recruit some good people. It's worth the time if you can get those people in office. 
Well, and, and it's an investment of time, and it's not just a, a privilege or a right to do it. It's a duty uh, to do these things. That's why each of us, if you get to enjoy freedom, what was it Thomas Paine said, something to the effect of, if you want to enjoy the, the blessings of liberty, then you have to undergo the fatigues of supporting it. Well, that's <laughs> that's what we haven't done for way too long. We've, we've just enjoyed the blessings and not uh, been a part of bearing the burden. And, and so that's really all we're saying is everyone, no matter where you live, no matter what you do for a living, no matter um, what you think your influence is, you have a voice. You have the opportunity to influence the future of our nation, and it starts on that local level. So again, we want to encourage you uh, to go to biblicalcitizens.com today, get signed up to host a biblical citizenship class. You will have a great time doing this. At the very least, you will enjoy the fellowship. But I'm telling you, you're going to watch those videos, and it's going to educate you, it's going to empower you, it's going to equip you, you're going to be inspired, you're going to you're going to have hope, and the people in the room are going to have hope, and you're going to look around the room. If you just have three people or you have 300, you're going to look around the room and go, I'm not alone. There's other people that care about the nation. There's other people that have a biblical worldview. There's other people that are willing to take action to save the country. So get engaged. Be a part of the solution. Do not just sit around and complain about it. Just can't say it enough. You can be part of the solution. You can be the catalyst for a restoration of biblical values and constitutional principles right there in your community. Let's make sure we don't let uh, the radical left take over our entire nation. They are winning a lot of victories in places like Colorado, as Senator Lumberg shared with us today. We're seeing a lot of that happen at the federal level. Uh, this is no time uh, to give up and walk away. This is a time to lean in and bring more biblical perspective to this, more salt and light. You get to be a part of that. Thanks so much for listening to Wobblers Live today. Be sure and go to the website today, wobblerslive.com, and make that one time or monthly contribution. That goes a long way as well. You may say, Rick, I, I don't have time to host a class or anything like that. Well, you can donate, and when you donate, it allows us to do more of this and to equip people even more. So you can do that at wobblerslive.com. Thank you to everyone for participating and doing your part. You've been listening to Wobblers Live. We stand undivided forever.